Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at Chrome OS Flex. This is software from Google that you can download onto a USB stick. And what it lets you do is convert old computers like this MacBook into Chromebooks. And apparently you can run it completely from the USB or install it onto the computer so it boots up to this special version of Chrome OS whenever you want. And I was really eager to check it out because I found this old Mac in my basement the other day. This was left over from a failed startup that I did a number of years ago. I haven't touched it in nine years, and when I booted it up, it was right where I left it. It must have put itself to sleep and dumped the contents onto the disk, and my web browser was tuned to Google+. This thing is a real time capsule, and we're going to see if Chrome OS Flex can be installed on this old Mac. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that no one is paying for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get to work now and see how this new Chrome OS Flex works. So let's take a look at the system requirements that you need to run Chrome OS Flex. It is requiring an Intel or AMD processor at this point, no ARM-based devices, and it has to be 64-bit compatible. Uh, they're recommending four gigabytes of RAM. At the moment, this machine only has two gigabytes, but I've read two gig machines do work as well. Uh, and if I run into trouble, maybe we'll install some RAM and see how it does with a little bit more memory on board. But I think we're going to be okay there. It needs a minimum of 16 gigabytes, so you could remove an old spinning hard drive and replace it with a compact flash drive or a cheap SSD if you want. Uh, so the storage requirements are not heavy here because it is Chrome OS and it largely lives in the cloud. Uh, you also need to make sure that your computer allows the machine to boot from a USB drive. This Mac does. Most Windows computers do, at least ones that were made in the last 15 years or so, so you should be good there. Uh, the one warning they have is that uh, components in computers made before 2010 may have a poor experience. So I think 2010 is probably the cutoff. Uh, for machines that are compatible. Now, Google does maintain a list of certified computers for Chrome OS Flex. What they've been doing is getting old PCs into their labs and testing them. And if it's on the certified list, there is some degree of certainty that this will run. And if it's not on the list, you should try it and see if it runs because it looks like there is a lot of compatibility across all of these major brands here. And it could just be that they haven't gotten to the computer that you have yet to test. So my advice would be download it and see what happens. Now, in order to get this to work, you do need a USB drive. When you install the Chrome OS Flex software, it will erase the USB drive. So copy everything important off of it before you start the process here. You also need a relatively up-to-date computer running the Chrome web browser, the latest version of the Chrome web browser, because you have to install a Chrome web browser extension to download the Chrome OS Flex software and write it to the USB. All right, so we're going to follow the steps on the Google Chrome website here. Uh, step one is to install the Chromebook recovery utility. And to do that, we're going to follow this link to the Chrome web store. And that's going to take us over to the extension that I talked about. And we're going to click on Add to Chrome. And we'll click on Add Extension. And as you can see here, it just put this up in the upper right-hand portion of my web browser. If for some reason you don't see it, as you can see, it just disappeared, uh, you'll click on this extension uh, icon here and pin it so it will be visible. And when we're done with this process, we don't need it anymore, so we can turn it off or uninstall it. But for now, we're going to need to have that there. Now, what they said you need to do next is make sure the uh, extension is turned on, which we just verified. And then we're going to click on that extension and begin the process of building out this installation. Now, what I need to do is plug my USB drive into my computer, which I'm going to do right now. My advice whenever you do something like this is to unplug any other USB drive you have connected to your computer. That includes backup drives, hard drives, whatever you've got that's plugged in with a USB port, unplug it to be safe so you don't accidentally erase the wrong drive. I have done that before. And what I'm going to do now is plug this into my computer and we'll pick it up from the first step of the installation process here. All right, so we're going to click on the Get Started link down here in the lower right-hand corner. 
and next it's going to ask me to identify my Chromebook. Now, this utility is used for restoring Chromebooks that you might buy in the store, but Chrome OS Flex is also listed here, and that's what we're going to use for this project. So I'm going to select Google Chrome OS Flex, and I think we just have to, yep, just select that unstable version. Uh, right now it is unstable at the time I'm recording this video, but Google is quickly working on making this stable. So when you see this maybe a year or two from when I recorded this, you'll want to select the stable version uh, just to be safe. And now that we're good with that, I'm going to click on continue here. Now this is where you really want to be really careful uh, because if you select the wrong drive, bad things will happen. But this drive that I have inserted right now is the one that I know I can safely erase here. And it's giving me the warning to make sure that I know that it's the correct media. And I am confident in that. So I'm going to click on continue here. And now it is going to erase my drive and create a install disk that we can plug into my Mac here in a second. So we're going to let this finish writing and we'll pick it up when it's done. All right, it says our media is ready here. So I'm going to click on done now. Uh, this might take a few minutes because it is a pretty big file that it's downloading and writing out to that USB drive. So if, it, if it's taken a while, just let it do its thing until you see that check mark. But now that we have the installation media written, we're going to try now to boot it up on this Mac. So I'm going to take out this USB drive and we'll see what happens next. All right, so we've got the USB stick here with the Chrome OS Flex software written to it. And I'm going to just plug it into one of the USB ports on this old Mac. This is back when Apple used to put a lot of ports on their computers. Uh, we are going to get an error message on the Mac side because it doesn't know what to do with it. We're just going to ignore that. And what I'm going to do here is hit restart. And every computer will do things a little differently. On the Apple platform, you're going to need to hold down the option key to force it to boot off of the USB. Uh, but Windows-based computers have different key presses that you need to do to get to a boot menu. And you will see links to that uh, on the Google instructions for the particular brand that you have. So it'll be a little trickier on the Windows side. But here on the Mac, you just hold down the option key. And you can see here that I have an option for EFI boot, which is going to point at this USB stick. So I'm going to click on that. And we'll hit the button. And we'll see what happens here once that gets going. So this will take a while, um, especially on an older computer. The USB speeds are not always that great. Um, but it is doing something. So I'm going to let this thing boot. and. Uh, see what we end up with here. But we are making some progress. We've got the Chrome logo up on screen. And once this is getting to a point where we've got something to do, we'll pick it back up and see what's next. All right, so we are now booted up. And you'll see here that we've got a screen for Cloud Ready 2.0. Now, Cloud Ready was a company that Google acquired that was installing the open source version of Chrome OS onto old computers. But Google bought them, and now Cloud Ready is going to become Chrome OS Flex. So that's why it says that right here. And there's a good chance if you're watching this in the future that uh, you will have it say Chrome OS Flex on this front screen. I'm going to click on Get Started here. And you have an option, and this is what's really neat, is that you can install this and wipe out the original operating system. Or you can just run it off of the USB drive and see if it works. So you don't have to commit to erasing your computer first to get going. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to select Try It First uh, just to see how this works before we wipe out my hard drive. Uh, it looks like my Wi-Fi is working, so I'm going to connect it up to my Wi-Fi access point, and we'll see what happens next. All right, so we've got it on the Wi-Fi. All is good so far here. I'm going to accept the Terms of Service. I'm going to have it connect to my account. And this is really reminding me a lot of the standard uh, install process for a regular Chromebook. So the next thing we have to do, because this is Chrome OS, is log into a Google account. And I'm going to do that right now, and we'll pick it up from there. OK, just like on a regular Chromebook, it's asking me if it wants to sync from my other Chrome OS devices. I'm going to do that, just so all my things are where I left them. I'll click to Accept here and Continue. And one thing that you get now with Chrome OS Flex that you did not have with the Cloud Ready product is that the Google Assistant works on here. So if you have it connected to your Google account, you can do all of your home controls like thermostats and light bulbs and all the other things that you can do with the Google Assistant. Uh, so this is going to load up here real quick. And 
uh, we'll go on from there. All right, so we are up and running here with Chrome OS, and I'm going to load up the web browser real quick and go over to my YouTube channel, and we'll see what happens when we do that. I'm not expecting blockbuster performance out of this computer. This is an old Core 2 Duo-based machine, uh, but as you can see here, it does look like it is able to render uh, this page just fine. Let's take a look at a recent video that I did here and see if we have audio. We've got audio, and yeah, looks like it's working. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at the Google Assistant now. Hey, what's the weather in New York City today? And there you go. You can see there's some glitches here, right? So this is the kind of thing that you might encounter, some things that just don't look right because it's kind of a general operating system and not hardware specific, but it uh, looks like a lot of it is working. Now, one thing that you will not find on Chrome OS Flex are Android apps at the time I'm recording this video. So if you go out and buy a Chromebook today, uh, you will get the Google Play Store and have the ability to install a lot of apps from the Android side of the world. You won't have that here. Additionally, this will not support VMware and their Windows virtual machines that some people run on Chromebooks. But uh, there are many cases where the Linux development environment works. And it looks like this one has that. So I'm going to install this real quick and make sure that it does in fact work, but it looks like at least on this configuration with this MacBook, we do have the option to install Linux software. I'm gonna let this thing run its course and we'll see if it works when it's done. So it looks like the Linux installation at the moment is not working, but I think it might have something to do with the fact that we're still running off of the USB and not the computer's internal hard drive. So this is a good opportunity right now to reboot and see what happens when we actually install Chrome OS Flex onto the hard drive. So let me do that and we'll pick it up uh, on the first step of the installation process. All right, so we just rebooted. I held down the option key as before. And the reason why I had to do that is because we have not yet installed Chrome OS on the hard drive. But the next step here that we're gonna take will do that. And we're going to be replacing the Mac operating system with Chrome OS. And I'm gonna select that EFI boot here like we did before. Now what's gonna happen is that it's going to uh, bring us back to Chrome OS when we do this, except it's going to look a little different. The reason is, is that the version of Chrome that we are running now on the USB stick is essentially connected to the Google account that we set up with it earlier. It's kind of like a portable version of Chrome, if you will. And we will have the option here on the boot up screen when it comes up here to install it, which is what we're going to do right now. So it's gonna be right here, at least at the time I'm recording this video. And now it's gonna take us through the hard drive installation. So we're gonna let this thing chew on that for a second. And because we're now ready to install it, I'm going to click install. Now, had we chosen this option at the outset, this would be the same process. But again, I wanted to try it first to make sure it would work on this computer before I wiped out the native operating system. And now you can see here it's prompting me uh, because it's going to erase my entire hard drive. So just like the USB stick now, the internal hard drive is going to get erased. And I am ready to go here. So I'm gonna click on install. And it looks like it's just going to do it for us here. So we're going to let this kind of run. I'm sure this is going to take a while. And when this is done, or if something pops up that we need to look at, uh, we'll take a pause and see what we have to do to get uh, through the installation process here. So stand by. We'll see what happens here in a few minutes. All right, it is done here now. It took about, about five minutes or so. And it's going to shut down in 40 seconds. It wants me to take the USB stick out, which I'm going to do. And what should happen here now after it reboots is uh, this will now become a Chromebook. It will no longer boot the Mac operating system. So I'm just gonna speed up the process here by shutting down and we'll turn it back on here once it is finished with its shutdown process. And it should now not require me to hold down the option key. It should just boot up. So let me wait for this thing to cycle itself and we'll see what happens on a first boot. All right, unfortunately, it looks like we are kind of stuck in a boot loop here. I've got the logo up, it's been up for a while. I did try to do a reinstallation to see if maybe we had something go wrong on it. And this thing is just sitting here. So I think for this old MacBook, 
the best solution is likely going to be running it from the USB stick and not from the internal hard drive. This machine, again, was not on the certified list of computers, and this could very well be some issue that this particular model of Mac has with uh, the Chrome OS Flex. So I'm going to let this thing kind of sit here for a while, uh, but while it is sitting, I am going to grab a Windows laptop that's a little bit more current and see if we can get it to turn into a Chromebook. Let's put this aside and get the Windows computer on the desk. All right, so we've got this Jumper Easy Book here operating now with Chrome OS Flex. I installed it on here like we were doing on the Mac earlier. And unlike the Mac, this thing booted right up into Chrome OS after that installation was complete. Uh, this is running with a Celeron N3350 processor. This is an Apollo Lake chip. It is a fanless, low-powered processor, and it is a little faster than the Core 2 Duo in that Mac. And it looks like we've successfully converted this thing uh, from a Windows computer into a Chromebook. This is what it boots up to now. And if I go to my YouTube channel here and browse the web, everything seems to be working just fine. The browser feels a little more sluggish on uh, Chrome OS Flex versus Windows, and it's probably due to a lack of optimization. Uh, this laptop also, by the way, is not on the certified list, but it is working better than the Mac did here. But all in, it seems to work. Audio is working. Browsing is working just fine. Another thing I was able to do here is get Linux apps to install. So we were able to get the Linux virtual machine running, and I can load up uh, different Linux applications like LibreOffice here and have those working alongside of my Chrome browser. But again, you won't get the Android apps working on Chrome OS Flex just yet. One other thing to note is that my Mac does still boot off of the USB drive, just not its internal hard drive. And another thing that I discovered here is that if you do run it off the USB in trial mode, as long as you keep that USB stick with the same computer, you won't have to reinstall uh, Chrome OS Flex each time. It'll take you right to the login screen. But if you take the USB stick out and put it in a different computer, you do have to go through that process of setting up Chrome OS Flex from the beginning again. Uh, so it's not a portable Chrome OS installation, at least so far in my testing. Every time you move it to a different computer, it starts from scratch. All right, so that is going to do it for this look at Chrome OS Flex. It is definitely still in a bit of a beta mode here, but this is going to be the direction that Google is going to take for running Chrome OS on things that are not designated as Chromebooks. This will be replacing Cloud Ready. And what's nice about it is that you can try it on a USB stick to see if it works. And just about anything with an Intel or AMD processor will work to some degree or another. So if you've got mini PCs kicking around or some old computer just kind of sitting in a closet, download it, give it a shot, see what happens. In the USB mode, you can just try it and make it a non-destructive kind of event. And it's a fun little project maybe for a weekend to see if you can squeeze a little bit more life out of a PC that you haven't really touched in a long time. We'll come back to this as things mature. You saw how it was kind of a hit or miss sort of thing with the computers that I had here to work with, but maybe you'll have better luck. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.